Well, we're doing an electromagnetic magnetic stirring system for a continuous casting. And what we had to do was test sensor systems that are not working with their system right now. And when performing those tests, we found different forms of interference, and we proposed solutions for them. All right, I guess we should spare um, Well, we were Team 9, we were the senior design team. Uh, we were uh, sponsored by Systems Control to optimize their spray application process for their substations. They make uh, substations for power lines. And as you can see, this is the original process. They were wasting a lot of foam for every building. It was around $6,000 in cost in foam and recycling. Um, we came up with a restrictive plate to uh, implement there. And with that, we had a factor of 10 uh, reduction in foam. And none of it with our recycling program was being put to landfills. So uh, we were able to accomplish our goal. I guess our project is a radar communications uh, hardware emulator. Um, it's basically a big black box that operates on serial communication protocols that gets linked to radar interface units. Um, when we have our Richie running, that's what we call it, um, we can edit the data that's coming in or being sent back to a radar interface unit um, and we convert it from hexadecimal to binary and then into a human readable format so that you can actually understand position vectors and whether things are actually set active and you're not reading a bunch of ones and zeros. Marty is with the power system and um, uh, when, a, when there's a failure or a blackout, it can either fall into two different islands of generation and load, or if it completely fails, the power system can build two islands. But each island has its own voltage magnitude, voltage angle, and slip frequency. And so, in order to restore the entire system, we have to connect them, tie them together. But if you just do it randomly, there will be a jolt and damage to the system. So you have to synchronize both of the values in order to make sure that there is minimal damage to the system. Currently, the company uh, manually uses a uh, technician goes out to the substation and looks at the synchroscope. A synchroscope gets voltages from both sides of the system and displays zero degrees phase difference when it points straight up when there's zero degrees phase difference and points straight down when there's 180 degrees phase difference. You want to close at zero degrees phase difference because that means the two voltage waveforms are lined up. It also rotates at the slip frequency, which is the frequency between the two islands. Um, but right now it's manually, so the technician has to drive out there, call back either generation, either generator, and tell them, okay, turn it down, turn it off, and it's a little. And there's also some human error involved because you can't close it right at zero. There's a circuit breaker time delay. It's a big circuit breaker, so you have to close it at a certain time while the image is rotating. So there is some human error. So they want to do this remotely from the control center at the heart of it. So our program collects the data from the whole entire system, displays it in this GUI, then um, ITC, using their stated network that they already have, send an ARM command to this relay, and the relay will perform the synchronism check to make sure that the systems are lined up, and it will send a closed command to the circuit breaker just at the right time so it will close at exactly zero degrees. Basically, this system is a tier by wire system, so we took out the hydraulic, uh, hydraulic pumps and of this uh, truck. So what we did was we put a, a motor, this, uh, a, uh, like a controller, and an amplifier for the system. So basically, when you turn your wheel, what you get is uh, when you turn the wheel, you send a signal out to the controller. The controller tells the motor how far you need to turn. And the, the, I guess the good things about the system is supposed to be it's supposed to save weight and space in the engine compartment. Um, you're also you're also able to implement a variable uh, steer ratio. And if there's any accident avoidance systems, so they can tap into the system and it will be able to control the steering of the vehicle around this object. System where we're able to control devices, we're able to have history of energy usage, and we're also able to, you know, update uh, prepaid energy. 
So, you know, this, this part here would be where we actually display the energy being used. This over here would be oh, 30 seconds, okay. <laughs> Scheduling, we're able to schedule different times and different power events so that we can uh, set a thermostat to certain points or we can set devices to turn on and off. Uh, history will be able to show a daily history, monthly history, or you can actually specify a date to date. Uh, expansion tab is probably not the most important in 30 seconds. And control is just the ability to control at any given time, control devices. Right now we only have three set up, but we, you could have you know, a, very, a lot of devices. Every device in your house you could have set up on here. We were limited to real estate on our touch panel because it was pretty small. So we limited it to a small number. Uh, and the whole idea of the, the whole system is to be able to actually, well, there's peak demand during the day, during any given day, stay out of your way. And what we want to do is be able to level that out. We want to level it out so that, it, you know, in the night we're using a lot of power too. And that way, we actually, if for the next 20 years, we wouldn't need new generation if we could level out our peaks right now. But during peak times, we're actually at the limit of what we can do. So, you know, and that's why they keep trying to build new power plants. And so that's the idea is to get customer awareness to help level out this peak energy demand. Absolutely. <laughs> so, once again, what we can demonstrate, some of the easy things to demonstrate are our ability to turn on and off. This would be our light, this would be our lamp, and this would be an appliance such as like a refrigerator or something like that. So if we turn the light on, we turn the switch on, and we update it. Oh, it's already on, my apology. <laughs> Let's turn the light off then. So we'll turn it, it takes a few seconds. Okay, there it goes. So it actually turns it off. We're also able to set temperature settings. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty warm in here right the second. We'll just say we're setting it to 51 because we don't actually have anything hit, hit, heating up or cooling. So we'll update that. Now, I don't think you can probably see it, but there's a temperature setting right up here. It'll change in a few seconds. I think. This is an autonomous vehicle. It navigates courses by itself. Uh, it has to follow lines, has to dodge obstacles, go through sand pits, has to navigate with GPS waypoints, and it does it all by itself autonomously. Well, our project, uh, what it's doing, is preparing for the advent of electric vehicles to be added to the power grid. And as far as the charging station, we utilize solar power and the ability to store energy so that we can use power from non-peak demand times and the renewable sources so that the peak demand on the grid doesn't go up when we add the load of electric vehicles. What we've been doing is tracking satellites using a telescope out in the observatory up in Atlantic Line. And uh, I guess these are some of the pictures that we've taken so far. At the moment, our system is too, uh, it's not picking up uh, faint enough images to actually track satellites, but we did get some interesting pictures of a lot of the planets in the solar system. Uh, we also worked this semester on uh, getting it to run remotely. So this computer actually right here, we could control the entire operation of the observatory from here. Design Team 3, and we had the remote control military vehicle project. And uh, here's the truck that we had to make remotely operated. Uh, we had to do that through using these wireless control boards. And here, here's our controller box, which this actually controls acceleration and braking, and this is the steering of the truck. These buttons are for the transmission control inside of the truck. Here's the power. And then this, this unit goes inside of the vehicle, and this is what controls all the different aspects of the vehicle.